Hi there. In this video, we're going to talk about a very important topic known as ERD diagrams. Entity Relationship Diagrams. That's what ERD stands for. And this is more of a design uh, concept. And this is often created by database developers that are um, introducing new data models into their database. And they want to add new data into their database. They have to first design how the data is going to go. What table is going to get what kind of data. And for that purpose, they have come up with this methodology of creating a diagram like this. All right? And this diagram is basically, uh, it represents tables and their relationships. That's exactly what ERD stands for. Entity Relationship Diagram. Think of each of these as entities or tables. And the lines between them are the relationships. So let's break this down a little bit. The customer's entity here, or a customer's table, has only customer information. Okay, we got the customer ID, customer name, customer address. It wouldn't make sense for the customer's table to contain items, right? That doesn't make any sense. It wouldn't make sense for the customer's table to have orders. It's a totally different entity. So customers should only have customer information. Orders should only have order information. Now, keep in mind that the orders is related to customers somehow. There is a one-to-many relationship between customers and orders. What does that mean? That means a particular customer can have many orders. So for example, if you're a customer, you go to the Amazon website, you add a bunch of things on your shopping cart and you play, you press the purchase button, you have now placed an order on Amazon, let's say, or eBay. And the order contains many items. It could have one item or it can have many items. That's where the items table comes into play. So if you notice the symbols here, if a customer can have one or many orders, meaning you come to the Amazon website today, you place an order. Tomorrow, you could place another, another order or, you know, you can place hundreds of orders on Amazon. You could be a very frequent shopper. Well, you are still one customer, right? But you're placing many orders. That's what this relationship shows. There's a one to many relationship here. And this pipe here represents a one. So a customer can have one or more orders. One or more orders. An order can contain one or more items. Okay, so this little crow's feet, this three lines here, these three little spikes. Think of these, this is actually known as a crow's foot in, in this symbol notation. So the crow's foot goes on the many side of the relationship. So an order can contain many items, one or many. Same thing with customers can contain, like it can have one or many orders. And as you can see, each of these entities have a uh, unique identifier. So each of the items that would go in the items table would have an item ID, a unique identifier. Uh, each customer in the customers table will have, uh, will be identified uniquely by a customer ID. Same thing with orders. Each order that gets placed on the website will have a uh, unique order ID that's associated with that, with that given order. So this is how you design a data model. I'll show you another example. And by the way, the tool that I'm using here to display this diagram, I'm using, a, it's called Kaku, C-A-C-O-O.com. This is a fabulous tool for creating software design models like this, okay? And this is a database design template that I'm using. ERD, that's what this is. You can also create flow models, all kinds of uh, all kinds of diagrams here, okay? So let's look at another example. Here's another one. This is also an ERD, and it has a, a different kind of relationship between some of these, enti these entities. So let's, let's go through these. So we've got the student's entity, course's entity, and instructor's entity. So think of these as things, and each of these things will be stored in their individual tables, right? So students would be in the students table and each student will be uniquely identified by student ID. A student table, the student table should not contain any course information. Okay, it should not. And the courses table should not contain any student information because you've got course ID that uniquely identifies a course. For each, every single row in the courses table is uniquely identified by the course ID. How could you have a student name there? That wouldn't make sense. Same thing for students. You've got student name, student address, and then all of a sudden you've got a course. 
that information should be in the courses table. And same thing for instructors. These are three different tables. Now let's observe their relationships here. You've already, we've already went through this kind of a symbol, right? A crow's feet with a one. This is on both sides of the, of the equation here. So what this is saying is many students can be enrolled in many courses. So if you break it down, a student can be enrolled in many courses and a particular course can have many students, right? And it wouldn't make sense for a course to just have one student. What kind of course is that, right? Not very popular. So a course can have many, many students and a student could be enrolled in many, many courses, right? A full-time student, let's say. But a student can also have just a single course. Let's say they're taking the semester off except for just one course. They, they want to keep a light semester. They could just keep one course. That's why there's a one here or pipe. So that's what this represents. One or more or many. So on both sides of the equation, you can have a really unpopular course that only has a single student in this example. Now let's look at this side of the relationship with courses and instructors. A course must have one instructor. Okay, that's why there's this pipe here. Notice there's no crow's feet because it wouldn't make sense for a course to have many instructors. I imagine you, can, you could have classes that are taught by uh, many instructors. You know, ideally, that's probably what it is in, in, in a college curriculum, but in a simple, let's say, a simple small school, a, a given course is taught, let's say, by a sim single instructor in this model, let's say. That's what this relationship represents. A given course can have one instructor. It should have one instructor. But an instructor could be teaching, could be teaching zero or more courses. So let's say this particular instructor knows math and English. So that given instructor is going to be teaching not only the math course, but also the English course. Okay, that's why we have uh, that given instructor teaching multiple courses. Now there's a zero here, right, this little circle. This represents a zero, which means that an instructor could be teaching zero or more courses. So you could have an instructor that is currently teaching no courses, but they're still employed by the school. They might just be busy doing some research or something. So they're still an instructor by profession, but they're not teaching anything. So that's what this zero represents. An instructor uh, could also be teaching zero courses or more. So hopefully that's uh, you, you're starting to get the point of what an ERD diagram is. We're uh, talking about the different entities and before they're saved in a table, we kind of form a relationship like this, a diagram to understand uh, how the, the data is related and uh, what are the different entities, okay? So database developers often, before working with data or new data, when they need to introduce new data in a project or an application, they create diagrams like this uh, to work out how the data is gonna be stored and used in the application. And uh, ERD diagrams are really helpful, helpful for that. Now, one thing I'll note is there's usually a rough draft. When you actually get to the practical implementation of this, you'll note that um, we have a many-to-many -many relationship. This is known as a many-to-many -many relationship between students and courses. But you can't force this relationship exactly like this in the database. When, when you have to practically implement it, you're going to need something known as an intermediary table that manages the relationship between the students and, and courses for this particular relationship. Many-to-many -many relationship. Now, why would we need that? Let's, let's work through this for a second. A student's, the student's table can only contain students. So it wouldn't make sense for, let's say, we only have 100 students in our school. That means we have 100 records in the student's table. Well, let's say we have 20 courses. And let's say that, that uh, one of the students takes five courses. We can't have that student repeat five times in the student's table because, again, in the student's table, each record in the student's table is uniquely identified by student ID. This is the primary key. So each record is a unique student. So they can't, we can't assign 10 courses to that one student in that row. It doesn't, it wouldn't, that structure wouldn't make sense. It wouldn't work. Same thing with courses. Each course is uniquely identified by this course ID. And let's say the course, there's, no, there's only 10 courses taught in the school. Well, we have 100 students. 
each row is uniquely identified by a course. So what? We're going to assign 20 students to that given to, to that one course. We can't add student IDs directly into the courses table like that, all right? We need something known as an intermediary table. And I'll go over that in just a moment. But let me just show you how we we would go about creating these IDs. Now let's come back for a second to this older diagram that we looked at previously. This is a bit easier to understand and now I'm going to start adding the columns and where they belong. All right, so let's think about this. Customers can have many orders. Each customer is uniquely identified by a customer ID. So let's say we have 100 customers in this customers table. Those 100 customers could have placed thousands of orders. So we should not have orders in the customer table. Now each order is associated with a particular customer. So in that case, it makes sense to add a customer ID as a foreign key here. So let me add that customer ID. Okay, so the foreign key here, notice the primary key in the customers table is customer ID. In the orders table, it's a foreign key. So let's say I'm the customer, my, my name is Imtiaz Ahmad. I'll place 10 orders. Each order is gonna have a unique ID, but each of those orders will also have the same customer ID, my ID. It could be placed on different dates, it could be different orders, but the customer ID is gonna be the same. Okay, so the foreign key goes onto the many side of the relationship here. Now let's look at items. Now there could be many items associated with the same order. So we need the orders ID here in the items table. So let's add that. Orders ID. Let's make this italic to represent that this is a foreign key. The customer ID here in the orders table is a foreign key. So we can have 10 items associated with the same order ID, okay? Now each of those items, of course, is gonna have a unique, you know, is gonna have a unique ID, right? Because item ID is the primary key. Each of the 10 items is gonna have a unique ID, but they'll have the same order ID because they belong, they, all of those items belong to the same order. Now you cannot add item ID here in orders because that just doesn't make sense and you can't add the order ID in the customer's table, that doesn't make sense either, okay? So hopefully you, you get the idea. The foreign key, right, is always on the many side of the relationship. That's why we have customer's ID here in the orders table and order ID here in the items table. So keeping this in mind, if we go back, we can't directly uh, have the student ID in the courses table or the courses ID in the students table we need an intermediary table. And let me show you what that table is gonna look like. I'm just gonna, um, well, let's just create a table here to prove the point. So we can call this table, let's, let me shorten this a little bit. We can call this enrollments. So the first row is gonna have, for example, the student ID 11112, for example, and the course ID could be one. And then the same student, 112, could be enrolled in a different course, two. And then a different student, let's say 113, could be enrolled in one. And 113 could be enrolled in course two. Okay, so this table now represents the intermediate, this is the intermediary table that will store the relationships between students and customers. And this is the kind of data that will go in here. It will only contain the foreign keys, the foreign key of the students and the foreign key of the, co of the courses. And so how would we form that relationship in a, in a diagram like this? Why don't you draw on a, on a piece of paper how you would draw that relationship out and uh, try it out on your own, then you can resume to watch my solution. So pause the video now and try that. Draw the entity relationship to incorporate this enrollments table in this model. You can pause the video now. Okay, welcome back. Hopefully you were able to do it. So let me move this up a little bit to make some room. And let me just make a, another copy of this table and paste it here. And let's call this enrollments. 
okay? And this will contain enrollment ID as the primary key for the enrollment table, and it will just contain the student ID as the foreign key. So I'll make that italic and the courses ID, course ID, like that. And this will be the intermediary table. And I'll delete this relationship here. We'll put the enrollments between these two, okay? Let's move all this stuff further. So now we have, let's, let's make this a little different so that we can see that there's an intermediary table. And I'll draw this like that. So a course can have zero or more enrollments. Okay. That's what this relationship represents. And same thing here on the other side. I'm just going to connect it here and put the other end down to this right here. And a student could be enrolled in zero or more courses. So they could be a student, still a member of the school, but not enrolled in any courses. That's what the zero represents. So it could be zero or many enrollments. And the foreign keys of the course ID and the student ID is managed in this enrollments table. And the data that goes in this table looks something like this, right? Where the first column here is the um, student ID and the second column here is the course ID. Uh, you, can enroll, you can ignore the enrollment ID here. You don't really need it because this table is just going to manage relationships. If you want, you can have a primary key for enrollments, um, but it's not necessary. The key here to, is to keep in mind that this enrollments table manages this relationship here. Okay. So hopefully you understand the whole concept of ERD. Now in the uh, Oracle SQL certified associate exam, there's no way they go into this much detail in the exam. You may have only one or maximum two questions associated with ERD diagrams. Okay we went into much greater detail as to how to design your tables even, or how to think about storing your data in entities that you design like this. But the questions associated with ERD diagrams, there's probably gonna be only one, and it's gonna be much simpler than the concepts that we've covered up to this point between both of these diagrams, okay? So hopefully you get the idea. Why don't you think in your mind, come up with different data models, think about how the data is gonna be stored, uh, in the tables, think about the relationships that you'll have to associate between the two entities and, and uh, come up with your own data and practice on this tool. Uh, and this, of course, is not going to, this practice is not going to help you much on the Oracle uh, SQL Certified Associate exam. This is just really good information to know and have knowledge about in the practical workspace, right? It's this target, this course is targeting not only the certification, but also how to be successful as a database developer in the workplace. So if you have that goal in mind, then definitely practice more with these concepts, learn, you know, play around with this, create your own data models. But this is not something you need to master by any means for passing the Oracle SQL Certified Associate exam. Okay, so let's wrap it up. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.